Oh, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I thought I'd just do a, uh, a quick video today. Um, I was sort of humming and harrying about doing one, but I thought I would just to provide a bit of an update on this classy amplifier uh, and where I got to in terms of playing around with that. I've um, got a few things coming up, so I'm going to set this aside for for a while. So I thought I'd just do a sort of, a, I guess, a summary of where I've got to. So you recall that the classy amplifier um, is this configuration here. So we've got our switching MOSFET. Um, with our VCC coming in through L1, which is essentially just an RFC, uh, and then the output um, circuit here um, transforming down to our, uh, our our load resistance here. So we have C1 across the drain to to, um, to ground, uh, and then our series C2 and the series inductor. Um, and you'll recall that from the last video that I was basing this on some design work done by um, by Nathan Sokal here. So that particular circuit is, is directly out of this paper here, um, and uh, and that's what I based it on. So you can see at the top of the picture there. So we have the, the switching MOSFET, and I'll talk about that. That initially was a an RF five ten. Uh, there's our RFC with our DC coming in, and then our output circuit coming down here. So we've got our our uh, capacitance um, C one, which is running from uh, the drain to earth. We've got our series capacitor there, our series inductor L two. Uh, and then our impedance matching transformer there to match the, the, the desired uh, low resistance that the uh, class amp wants to see up to our desired 50 ohm um, load resistor there which is just the uh, the dummy load. Uh, those capacitors there in the end um, I'll probably mention later on were Weimer devices so high voltage devices uh, just elected to go for either 100 or 250 volt devices there uh, they were quite economical to buy those in um, a set of five from the local supply here. Um, over the back here we just have a um, an MC34151, it's a high speed dual MOSFET driver, uh, just using one of those channels there. Uh, the imp input to that is coming from uh, the SIGGEN, which is currently set to 3.75 megahertz, uh, just basically driving that and then the output of that, you can't quite see there, that green wire there is then feeding the, um, or driving more the point, the gate of the switching MOSFET which is sitting on the other side there. Uh, just a small series 0.1 ohm resistor there for the VCC coming in, just to give me a, just a, a small voltage drop across that that I can sense uh, to determine how much current is going into the circuit. Anyway, so the, the last time I um, I did the initial thinking about this design, I uh, I worked on uh, 12 volts for the VCC. Uh, this one here I'm going to work on 5 volts, and the reason for that is um, the switching modulator here, the, the, the output of that uh, final um, MOSFET here which is switching the, the main VCC coming in which is 12 volts on this particular system uh, by the time you have a 50% duty cycle on that uh, what we're getting out of, or what I'm getting out of this low pass filter here at this point is just under half VCC, so roughly 5 volts um, so I've designed the, the classy amplifier here to, to have a, uh, a 5 volt VCC at this point here um, not 12 volt, not 12 volts like I did last time. So um, you'll see in the last video, it's, it's the same, the same calculations. I used uh, VK1 Sierra Victor's uh, online calculator, uh, where he's just provided a nice way of um, uh, using the design calculations from uh, Nathan's paper. Um, you need to feed in some some set variables for a start. Uh, push calculate, and it will spit out the uh, the two capacitor values, the inductor as well as the desired uh, load resistance. Um, just set again the default sort of Q equals 5, VCC equals 5 volts we said, um, desiring or wanting to get uh, 10 watts um, out of the amplifier, uh, 3.75 megahertz is the, um, the frequency of oscillation they want for this, um, and then that L1, which was that RFC coming in, uh, was initially set to 166 microhenries. I uh, also needed to work out the saturation voltage, so I just sort of just went with uh, 10 watts divided by 5 volts gives me the current times the 0.54 ohms is the RDS gives me uh, 1.08 volts like I say throw that into um, VK1SV's calculator online and it will spit out the 0.79 ohms for RL um, our, our output capacitor C1 which is this one here um, it comes out with a, a number of uh, 11.198 nanofarads you then have to subtract the output capacitance of the device that you've already got, so 81 picofarads or 0.081 nanofarads, uh, gives me a desired 11.117 nanofarads as a name point. 
Uh, C2, that series capacitor there, comes out at 14.382 nanofarads, and then L2 was uh, 0.168 microhenries. Now the transformer, um, transforming that 50 ohms down to uh, approximately 0.8 ohms there, gives me a turns ratio of 7.91 or close enough to 8, so I've used a turns ratio of 16 to 2. So that transformer there has 16 turns on the 50 ohm side, and like I say, two turns on the side that's facing the, the classy amplifier. Right, so um, those were the values that I started with initially, um, and then I uh, tried to interpret uh, what I was seeing on the scope for the output of the, the drain, or scoping the drain voltage there. Um, and what I was starting to see was not certainly not as nice as clean as this, but uh, a signal that was certainly giving the indication that I was getting this uh, as an output there. Um, so this is when the device is turned off, and this is when the device is turned on. Um, so according to uh, this paper here from Nathan, he talks about um, some of the things you can do to try and get it to the ideal waveform of um, on, say so yeah, off, the device is off, and then on. Uh, so in this particular case I needed to increase C2 and that's why we're seeing here uh, two additional capacitors um, by adding those in um, I got that to come pretty well down uh, near the bottom certainly not, not pretty but uh, I could certainly see as I increased the value of C2 that that, that came down uh, and conversely the output power went up so that was one of the changes um, I made um, I also played around with L2. So L2, if you recall, initially was, if I was just getting out of the plastic container here, um, this large device here. Um, a lot of the documentation for the classy amplifier suggests that the, the, um, the value of the RFC is, is, is not that important. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but so what I decided to do was just to use uh, a... Um, a standard RFC with 10 turns on uh, an FT50-6, if I recall. Um, sorry, a 50-43, what am I saying? Uh, and that seems to work quite well, so uh, it's certainly a lot cheaper than trying to use something like this, um, and seems, like I say, perform equally well. Um, the inductor here for L2, so L2 initially started off, like I said, with 166 microhenries. Uh, in the end, um, I dropped that down to... Uh, four turns, which gave me a value of 137 uh, microhenries. The reason why I dropped that is um, L2, um, this value here, uh, to calculate L2, it's um, our, our, our loaded Q times R over 2 pi F, or omega. Um, now, initially when I first designed it using the, the values that came out of the calculator, uh, the maximum amplification was coming through at about 2.8 um, megahertz. So um, using that value for L2 there, I decided to uh, up the frequency by decreasing the value of L2. And like I say, it's now come out at, um, at 1.37 microhenries. So at the moment, um, if I was to just to crank it up, so we were just to key that there. Um, that's our output voltage there with no filtering. Uh, that's sitting on 10.8 watts, um, and that upper waveform there is our collector voltage. Now if I was to remove that uh, additional capacitor on C2, there'd be an additional lump there. Uh, as soon as you apply it, that lump sort of disappears. Certainly not beautiful and pretty, and certainly not in line with uh, the, uh, the example that was given in the paper, but, but interesting enough. Um, so, yeah, so the current going in, I got about 3.5 amps going in at 5 volts, uh, and like I say, getting 10.8 watts out, which has given me an efficiency value of just over 60%. So, uh, certainly not as good as uh, a well-designed and tuned Class E amplifier. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, yeah interesting. So I guess it, it was interesting sort of playing around with this. And another thing I did change again, I, should, and I didn't mention that, and I apologise. Uh, I initially started with an IRF 510, 
and then swapped out and tried playing around with a, uh, an IRF 540. So what's currently in there at the moment is the 540, which has given me 10.8 uh, watts output. Uh, if I swap that out and put back in the IRF 510 uh, for the same values of all the output components there, um, that drops down to 5.7 watts, uh, which is interesting. The output capacitance of uh, the IRF 540 is significantly higher. It's 560 picofarads as opposed to 81 picofarads of the 510, um, which may have had a uh, something to play with. Uh, its on resistance is also quite a bit lower than the IRF 510. So the 510 has 0 0.54 ohms versus 0 0.07 uh, for this, so a little bit lower there. Um, yeah, so you know, I, I can't explain why that is. Um, it would be nice to be able to sort of apply it back to some kind of formula to to really work it out. But um, like I say, I don't have enough knowledge of of the classy amplifier to really understand uh, what's going on there. Uh, in fact, that was actually incorrect. What I showed you before, if I just go back in just to, just to correct myself, that um, trace at the top is not actually the drain voltage. Uh, that is what's on the gate. If it was now just to swap this back around down here off off the gate down to that pick off point there, that is now the, uh, directly the output of the drain. So we were to go back to the Apologies for that. Um, we would see... Uh, oh, there it is there. So you can just sort of see the remnants now of that, uh, that little lump. Uh, if I was to remove that capacitor, that would certainly jump right up to here. It was quite pronounced. Um, so I'm not getting that sort of nice, uh, the device is off, therefore the voltage is high, device is on, right down to zero for half a period, uh, but certainly a lot better than it was. But, but like I say, it's it's producing uh, 11 watts at the moment, so again, or 10.8, close enough to 11 watts, so that's pretty good. Um, but I suspect if, if I was to, I don't know, try and work out how to better tune this to get more to the ideal waveform, then I suspect the efficiency of the uh, the amplifier would go right up. But hey, you know, for a 5 volt VCC, uh, getting 11 watts out, um, yeah, I'm no expert in this uh, in this game in any way, shape or form, but uh, that's not too bad. Right, yeah, well I think that's all I wanted to, to pass on, just to, like I say, just a quick update. Um, I've got a few things coming up, so I'm going to uh, set this aside for a while, uh, and then uh, look to revisit it um, sometime in the future. But Certainly been quite an interesting exercise uh, to this point in terms of playing around with the pulse switch modulator up here, um, producing that um, that variable uh, switching signal for that MOSFET to then chop on and off the VCC coming in uh, through that low pass filter to to basically present at this point here a nice varying um, DC voltage varying at the audio rate uh, to amplitude modulate uh, what will be the amplifier. But I haven't got time to do it at the moment, so uh, I'll save that for another time. Anyway, I'll say 73 is there. Like I say, it's nothing startling. It's just more of an update of, uh, of uh, where I got to. And uh, I'll say 73s, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers all.